Finished it last you week. You finished it, including the DLC. Mm-hmm. All right, I am ready to hurt you. <laughs> well, with that and a hiccup, this is one upsmanship. <laughs> Welcome back. Your dreams were your ticket out, and they expired, so you're stuck here with us. So everyone's dreams are dead. That's who your our audience are is, dead, just like the real Mister Cotter. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, these voices you hear are me, Michael Swain, one of your co-hosts, and. Me, Adam Ganser, your other co-host. Yep. And we have a very special guest this week, someone we're very thrilled to have back. Welcome, Vanessa Gritton. Me, Vanessa Gritton. <laughs> Writer. The gamer, guest. Comedian. Editor? Uh, that, no. Uh, Spanish language joke sp- improviser Spanish on set. Spanish language uh, line producer. And I, I, I got my first producer credit. I don't know what yeah. a producer does. <laughs> That's you're right on point. You're you're doing exactly the right thing. Adam knows what a producer does, and I what do. a producer does, no one knows. No. Yeah, I'm the only one. I've looked into the abyss, and I come back with wisdom, and no one wanted to hear it. Hire this man. <laughs> um, but at any rate, yeah, we are covering a game we've been excited to cover for quite yep. a long time. Excited yeah. in different parts of our hearts, I would say. Yes, mine's the left chamber, where, my, the, where the anger gro- grows. Wherever the fanboy yeah. lives is, yeah. what I, is the part of my heart that's pumping strong. Mine is the one that lives for drama. <laughs> oh, so you're oh. just... Because we almost... Wow. I want to do full disclosure for the fans. We're covering Fallout New Vegas. Yeah, we are. And it's we've known so long that it's going to be contentious, and... I'm an oversensitive person, and Adam and I love each other very much. Very but much. I think going into this, we're mildly nervous. We're like, yeah. we shouldn't have a guest because it's going to get thorny. And then Vanessa slyly convinced us to have her on. And now <laughs> you're saying really you're just here to just, stir up <laughs> shit. I just, I just want to put kerosene on right. what she that, really does. Just a little, little spray bottle spritz of it, uh, of it in between. I just, I just want to, I just want to master chaos. Okay, <laughs> so Vanessa's doing an evil run for but, this podcast. <laughs> I, Already way on board with what she's great. doing. This is already a great decision. We better get down to it because it's going to be a long episode, but I see her lips pursing. Well, Vanessa, <laughs> Vanessa's the only person who has borne witness to our email exchanges about how this mm-hmm. podcast should be done. Yep. Like literally the only person, like the thoughtful, like complex, nuanced tomes right. that we write <laughs> yeah. about how we're going to do this fucking episode. <laughs> yeah. Vanessa knows it and you're going to see all well, the darkness that, she weaves with that. Adam's known me for a long time, so he knows I'm sensitive and he's like, okay, Michael, so... I'm going to say negative things. <laughs> it doesn't mean I don't like you. It doesn't mean I'm mad at you. But you have to let me say negative things I think about yeah. Fallout. And yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's just like watching a, just watching a tango where one person is really, really not wanting to be led and the other person's aggressively dipping you. Yeah, it's yes. your classic Weinstein tango. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you guys see the red carpet thing where the guy wore the t-shirt that said Weinstein's innocent? Oh my what? God. Topic for another podcast. Oh man, I wasn't on the internet and I missed <laughs> no. that. <laughs> Happened this morning, but I didn't need to see We that. gotta get down to it with yeah. our first checkpoint, which is the speed run. Vanessa, are you up for a speed run? Yeah, I actually I wrote notes because I was trying to remember exactly wow. everything that happened. I want to hear a speed run that sets us up for a maximum amount of drama later on. <laughs> And the clock is ticking. What is Fallout New Vegas? All right. So Fallout New Vegas, uh, you're basically, again, in a desert of our own creation. You're a courier this time. And then a courier that is ambushed by Chandler Bing. I don't remember the name of the guy that did it, but I know that it's Matthew Perry. Pretty Johnny. Uh, It's Pretty Johnny. Pretty Johnny (laughs) something. It's one of those cutesy, pulpy names. But we're just going to call him Chandler Bing. You're ambushed by Chandler Bing, who wants a chip that you have. Uh, I feel like this is a cowboy bebop plot. Uh, where there's uh, some information loaded in a chip, but we're just going to pretend that this is just a Fallout New Vegas property. Uh, And then, uh, God, you're, uh, I don't know, left for dead like you usually are in a Fallout game. Uh, And then you're rescued by some guy named Benny. Uh, No, you're ambushed by the guy named Benny. Benny's the guy that shot you. There it is. Bingo. So you're rescued (laughs) by a guy named Victor uh, on on your adventure to get this chip back. You run into Caesar's, Caesar's Legion, whose whole thing is we have slaves. And the CNR, who I think 
are supposed to be the Democrats. I'm not sure. Um, the ruler of all of New Vegas, the de facto ruler, is a guy named Mr. House because Vegas lends itself to a lot of evil types because Vegas is a really, really evil place. Uh, everybody wants the Hoover Dam because it's the last source of clean water and power. So you all eventually meet up for a fight for that. And that's where you find out the chip is data. Oh, God, I'm trying to remember what else happens in this fucking game. You eventually meet a guy named Yes Man, who I I believe gets you the best ending out of it. Mm. Uh, and uh, the biggest bummer about the entire thing is uh, eventually when you make your choices about this universe, you can't keep playing afterwards. Mm. So Okay, all sub and side quests. <laughs> Go. Description. No, uh, no, no. We're done. We're good. No, but we are going to get into that in some length here. I want to talk about the DLCs yes, before Yes, that's we're done. what we, yeah. we need to talk about the DLCs. Uh, but a speed run would not really really be Agreed. a speed run if yeah. it encompassed everything. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, especially a game like Fallout where it's the good level meat overview. of it right. is, is, is all of the other side quests that you get to go on, especially a game like Fallout Vegas. Absolutely. So that takes us to our next checkpoint and the rants portion. Uh, this is a touchy rants portion. I, uh, who wants to go first? I think you should go first. Okay. <laughs> Player one, begin rant. Uh, I will. I decided what to say for my rant this time, which I never wow. do ahead of time. Prep. I'm gonna rant by describing three other games that I've been obsessed with lately, and I realized they all have a similar theme, which is that Adam would fucking hate them. <laughs> 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 I have been playing Flame in the Flood, The Sunless Sea, and Impact Winter. Okay. And then I did without thinking about it. Those are the three games I've been marathoning in a row. And after I finished Sunless Sea, I was like, oh shit, I'm playing the same type of game over and over. This must be revealing about me. And I realized it bore on this episode mm. because all three games are lackluster in their gameplay mechanics and balance glaringly. Mm. And all three games feature long, boring parts where you can't control anything and you're just waiting to see what happens next. And I love all three games don't care at all about how the games themselves are poorly built because I realize all three games feature incredibly rich, deep world building worlds. So I realized that that is either what appeals to me or from a different perspective, my blind spot is I will forgive almost anything if the world is truly interesting. And I think anyone who's played fallout Vegas knows where I'm going with this. Yeah. So I'll end the rant there and talk more about it later. Yeah, it's good. All right. Yeah. Is it my turn? Uh, I'm looking at you with Clint Eastwood glare. But you really are. <laughs> We're all yeah. just, it's, it's a Mexican horn. standoff. We'll go around the horn. Because well, Vanessa yeah. promised drama, so I want her to interpret my thing in a way that makes right. incendiary towards you. Maybe yeah. we should have given more space so she could dance it out for us. You know? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, like, what you said at the end is pretty much one of my biggest issues with gaming as well that I've started noticing after the first time we recorded together which is I forgive a lot for an interesting story and I forgive a lot for a really really cool landscape like I have played some truly garbage games because I'm like well isn't this pretty uh and what I will say is while it has a really great first act it kind of falls off after that. It's really strong at the beginning and it tends to be a little bit too linear towards the end. And while I do really love the characters in it, there's a lot of invisible walls in that really pretty landscape that I can't explore as much as I would like to. And I want something to come out the way I want it. I don't want a DLC to do that for me. So that's that's my that's my rant. Right. That's Player legit. three. That's legit. Okay, well, uh, I'm not going to be a prick about this. I, this was, I thought, the best of what Fallout is good at. No no doubt. Like, I think out of all the Fallouts I've played, which is now three, uh, this one has the best conceptual execution on a lot of things. Um, it did show me that Fallout 4 was a better game than I gave it credit for, for this reason. Mechanically, Fallout 4 fixed a lot of things that this game does really poorly. More poorly. And it's still pretty clunky. And it's still pretty clunky. <laughs> this game has things that are like, whoa, uh, fucking what? A few things like that. Um, I thought the environment was the worst environment for a Fallout game, and I'll get into why that is later. Um, I understand that we like Vegas. I know everyone already <laughs> on the internet's blowing their mind. Nope, it's the worst one. It has the best characters. Um, yeah. The Kings alone make it my favorite fallout the kings like, are incredible oh they're the best fucking thing it's the best and it's exactly what makes fallout good like that was like right on point although real missed opportunity to call him the bings since he's a member <laughs> <laughs> uh, could we be in more of a post-apocalypse <laughs> <laughs> 
just a friends themed <laughs> bar where they all wear friends masks. Um, pivot in vats. <laughs> Sorry, I'm done. Pivot. Yeah. So, I I, I don't want to get into every single nuance of this. This game shows me what I like about Fallout more than any other game. It also shows me why I think Fallout is not the series it's meant to be, according to everybody else. I think it's an average series for games. Mm. I think it's a way above average for narrative. So let's get into that. One clarifying question. Do mm-hmm. you think the uh, Elder Scrolls series, would you also say that's average or stellar? For some reason, for me, Skyrim is still a transcendent entry. Everyone loves Skyrim. So I, don't because I can it. tell you why. I mean, <laughs> But I'm going to get into yeah. this later. But for me, Skyrim is still the best that this studio has produced. Still. Different studios, which is my first point in. But they're the game company, Bethesda, and they make the same structure of game, essentially. Skyrim's still the best. Checkpoint, checkpoint. Sure. Game on! Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I just wanted to say I was actually kind of heartbroken when I saw the recent gaming article that said that Bethesda promises that they'll never outsource the writing ever again. And Fallout New Vegas was written by a studio called Obsidian. Yep. And they literally, in my perception, just promised like, don't worry, we promise there will never be a Fallout game as interesting as New Vegas. Don't worry. You'll never worry. have another NPC like, well, as cool as a, Veronica. That's a really bad decision, in my opinion. But yeah. why do you think it's the best? What, I mean, because of the world and the story and the characters. I'm going to double down and agree completely with you on the interstitial environment, if this is what you meant. Because yeah. the word that immediately lit up a neon in my brain is monotony, right? It's the oh, most monotonous environment part in any of yeah. Fallout game, right? Okay. It's part of it. Because I do think... Because one of my favorite core concepts of the Fallout franchise is they all take place in the same time period, but in different regions. Yeah. And they have clues to each other. They speak to each other across franchises. You can find out what happened to various characters after the game ended Mm -hmm. by blah, blah, blah. The Southwest region means desert. Desert plus post-apocalypse is really realistically a very monotonous environment. Like, what did you expect it to be? The same as it would be. If I was to drive my car, park it on the freeway, and just go wander in it, I would have exactly the same experience. Except without monsters. There's just occasional monsters. Sure, there's occasional (laughs) monsters, but fuck that. This is Fallout. I'm supposed to be walking through a world torn apart by an atomic event, Mm -hmm. right? And that doesn't really happen in this game until you get to Vegas. Vegas is unique and interesting, and it's the only time you get the Fallout thing that I think is essential to what makes Fallout good. I think wandering through burned out buildings and a place that used to be a fully thriving civilization is essential to Fallout. Yeah. And this game doesn't have it. Yeah. Of, well, that I, it doesn't is the have first it. thing I'll push back on because I think what it has is way more filler in between those things. But if you count the number of locations and events, as is true with every game, it's more than there were in the one before it, but less than the one that came next. Like it's as big a map. I don't think it is as... more than Fallout Three in the sense. Uh, definitely, the map is bigger. I'm, let's just clarify terms. The map is bigger. There are more places to go and caves to explore. And I feel and like that makes get. you feel like nothing's happening. Though. And I'll agree yes. that that amounts to filler if you don't like scavenging, which I do because I find it very zen. Yeah, I'm a big like I collect a lot of herbs. Get, yeah. Like when I get like if I play Skyrim, I have an inordinate amount of cat bitches. Like yeah. that's how I play. That's fair. I also like liked scavenging in this game more mm-hmm. than I like. I, when I played this game, I was like, okay, I'm gonna remember what I said about Fallout Four because I played it after that episode, mm-hmm. and uh, see if what I said was true. I actually do like scavenging more than I said I did in Fallout Four. Ah. That episode, I like it a little bit more. And yet, it still feels like filler. Like the world's too big and well, boring. Well, it is filler because yeah. it is just walking. From well, it's the what you do in thing. between things. Correct. Yeah. But but again, that is. A huge percentage of the game and what makes Fallout 3 and 4 better is that the filler gives you feelings that are Fallout based feelings because you're wandering this world like, oh my God, look at that building. Oh, look at that fucking weird dog that died or this skeleton here. So and they ta- just don't okay. have that. In so you're this talking game. about. Not enough dead dogs in New Vegas. Not enough dead de- fucking dogs. But right? it sounds like you're talking about the Breath of the Wild experience. You mean organic things where you find and you're like, what is that on the horizon, right? I think that is the most important thing in a fallout game oh that experience i don't of care about that at place. all okay but fine like it, no that's people can get a gauge on who they can, agree with more. but we're gonna zero in on like there's i got one thing that's gonna hurt you oh, and i'm, I'm waiting okay. for it yet no no oh. not yet <laughs> we're gonna zero I'm in gonna on deploy it, it when you're vulnerable <laughs> you're gonna show me your like red flashing spot and that's when the fucking silver light comes at you no there's one thing about this that i'll just say it now uh 
I think that Fallout New Vegas is better on an Excel spreadsheet, like a list of log lines of things that happened Mm -hmm. and things that you experience and find out way better than any Fallout on that, on basically on that scale. Mm -hmm. The experience of it is the same or worse as Mm -hmm. it is. It's definitely worse than it is in Fallout 4 and it's the same or maybe a little worse as it is in Fallout 3. So the execution of those log lines Mm -hmm. which is essential to any interactive element, is worse. And for me, a person who really values that, I'm a filmmaker, that's not a forgivable sin. I can't get over that. And if you're more like me, someone who is a writer and likes books, it right. feels like a playable <laughs> book. And this is what I want to push back it on. It does feel like that. Because I think it's something that other people out there will agree with and may never have heard said about a game like this. Yeah. Is I've heard many, many people realize or believe or perceive that these long boring spots are a weakness because a game is all about like cocaine, like hitting your dopamine Mm -hmm. receptors as soon as possible. Right. And I'm arguing that a game doesn't have to be about that. Yes. And that they did, they insert a lot of filler with the best soundtrack ever committed to a video game. I agree with that. It is the best of the fallout. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a phenomenal. I don't want to get derail with a whole argument. I actually downloaded and listened to there's other great soundtracks, but that wasn't my takeaway point. My takeaway point is I believe so in the same way that art can have visual art can have a blank space for the eye to rest. I believe that the filler material is intentionally sparse so that you can meditate on the moral quandary that you're facing because I flip my decision 50 times as I'm walking around the wasteland right. thinking like, yeah, or maybe I want to go with Mr. House or maybe I don't know what is right in human life. Should we go to with the NCR? But they're just going to rebuild the same systems that destroyed the world in the first place. Yeah. But it might right. last a while and provide stability. Everything's transient. Like this is what I'm thinking while I'm scavenging. And I feel like, and I'm not trying to make you sound dumb and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like you're scavenging thinking, I already know what I want to do. Where's the next thing? Yeah. And I'm not thinking that. I'm like debating it. I'm I'm usually just hearing somebody sing Yankee Doodle in my brain when I'm not thinking about an immediate thing. Shoot that bug. Hey, I shot that (laughs) bug now. (laughs) Exactly. Oh, mine's just all scat man. (laughs) Like, I'm just a never ending loop. What is that? Uh, Like, just all the time. But like, what based on what you said i kind of just realized why i love this game so much and it's because it reads like a stephen king book there's a lot of filler before i get to the meat but the filler lets me chew on the meat for a little bit Mm -hmm. that's Mm. why i dig this game so much because i have time to sit there and really weigh out my options because based on that and also all of the new dialogue options that are made available to you i feel like i have a little bit more control and then time to figure out how i want that to go If you haven't played it, I would never recommend playing, especially this one, without doing a high charisma character. That's what I did. Because it's super... Yeah, it's much more rewarding. And I see what you said about it hurt, so I had to let my emotions subside. Yeah. But only took about a minute. Now they've subsided. You're right about the spreadsheet thing. But like... I'm weirdly not bothered. Like, I know, that's, that's I'm okay who you are. saying, you're right, it's the best goddamn spreadsheet anyone ever <laughs> fucking no, but, made. But this, is, but this is like, this is what Helmstick we're really doing cells. now is like, we're talking about personality None traits. of us are right or wrong, but it helps people yeah. know what the game is about. Well, yeah. but also <laughs> it tells you that fundamentally, like in our entertainment, we're looking for replications of who we are in it. And like, yeah. relation, like we relate to that. So like what you just described, the painful, aching decision making, I don't make any decision like that anywhere in life. I know exactly what I want to do. And oh, do even it. outside of game worlds? Okay. I make every decision like that. Oh, no, I'm Hamlet-ish. And that's not, that's, <laughs> but that's not, it's not because I'm better. It's just that's how I know what my, what I want to do. My mind yeah. knows and my heart knows what I want to do. So I'm nev- I've never made a decision in Fallout that I labored over. Never. I've always known exactly what I wanted to do. Even, or do you grant that there are some where the writers are at least trying to make 100%. it a difficult gray area? 100%. Which I appreciate. Because like yeah. you play uh, Knights of the Old Republic and it's like, Every choice is kill the orphan or save the orphan. Yeah. One right. thing I liked about Fallout New Vegas is like, oh, I don't know. That is a classic prisoner's dilemma. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, because as someone that really loves Bioshock, it's not that hard between do I kill the child or do I save the child? <laughs> right. no, not that's a hard easy. choice. Yeah, but even easy. those decisions yeah. you found easy. Gray area decisions. Um, I th- like my experience of them is I, I realize they're gray and like I'll be like, oh man, it's tough. I'm going to have to do this, but this is going to be tough. I acknowledge that moment and then I do it. 
I see. I don't yeah. I don't need to wander around the clay earth and figure out what I want to do. And that's just not who I am in general. Mm. That's fine. You know, like I, that, that tells me something because I don't think the way I do things is normal. I think most people are more in your camp than mine. Mm-hmm. Like but I admire deliberate. that. Like now I have an aching desire to ask you, should I give up on Hollywood or not? No. Because <laughs> I'm constantly laboring. No. Over. No. All right. Done deal. I'm sticking no, around. I'm not going to give up. And I have way better reasons than you do. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, no. Well, that's arguable. That. But and I'm just driven by spite. Argument. So I can't. <laughs> yeah, that's fuck yeah. them. I have to become part bigger than them and yeah. crush them. <laughs> I just I'm just driven by a sense of just oh man, you said I couldn't and now I'm gonna sleep for thirteen hours, wake up and then grind it for another twenty because I hate you. <laughs> I mean, I'm I mean this is a detour, but like for me, if I wasn't two hundred grand in debt and ten years of time sunk into this career, I would quit. Yeah. But I am. I'm not so I'm going that's to That's why I might. I'm, I'm I don't good. have any student debt. And that's, that's also how I play Fallout. Is this sunken fallacy? I know, but you know what though? Like, I know it's a fallacy, and I'm sure one asshole will tweet me about it, and I will remember their name and destroy them later. Yeah. Wait, what's a fallacy? The sunken cost fallacy. Yeah. Right. It's oh, how okay. I play Fallout, yes. and also do a lot of things. Yeah, I do that with major life decisions, but I also believe that that I I don't really let the sunken cost thing. Matter as much, but as Vanessa, should. you'll be like, "Oh, I already did three steps towards helping this faction. I better yeah. help right. them now." Yeah, where I'm like, "Oh <laughs> man, I've been on this mission for an hour, and I hate it, and I hate these people, but I already put so much time into it, so I got to see it through." That's true. I do, I do do that. Yeah. I, I like, I got into the NCR on this one, uh-huh. and I NCR is probably the blandest choice. Mm-hmm. It's more of the same, but also it's like, same, I, I don't believe in any of these maniacs. The NCR is the only relatable faction to me that's like, I kind of want people to be okay. The NCR you know? is just saying, let's try to restore the civilization try as it, it was. Yeah. And I think the only fungible argument against that, which is compelling, is, but that series of systems led to the apocalypse in sure. the first place, so is there yeah. a better way? But of course, you're right, though, when you're like, well, is the better way brutal slave-based economy? Most people would go like, I bet that's not the right yeah. answer. Um, and which is why, from our perspective, we know that that Caesar's Legion is an evil run if you support them. It's not only that. I mean, I just think that's not an appealing view unless it, it's only appealing as a faction because it's in a ridiculous video game. It's it, not in any way philosophical. It appeals appealing. to brutal logic. That in the apocalypse, you have to revert, revert to survival of the fittest. It appeals yeah, to like then, the Klingon logic center of my then brain. Why, why wear fucking old Roman armor and have spears and bullshit like that? Like, and I understand. Because like, the it, Roman it, Empire, it, the Roman Empire was the most stable, successful human enterprise of all time. And they're trying to bring that back. Right. But, you know, even though it was brutal, that's but, their but argument. Like, just one step of extrapolation tells you don't you wear armor. Get guns and wear normal <laughs> shit. They have guns. Caesar's Legions carries they guns. They steal them from <laughs> the people they kill with spears. Yep. I read the lore on this shit because okay. I was like, what the fuck is this happening? Um, I just think that's like dumb. Like I, I think it's cool, but it's also dumb because like that's not what people would do. Well, especially when you go to Zion that. and the DLC and the white leg signature weapon is a Tommy gun. And you're like, I want to see the Caesar's Legion right. try to take over this place. They use spears. There's no chance <laughs> of it. I've like, seen enough people now in 2018 riding a penny farthing bicycle to where it's not that far <laughs> that somebody would want to wear armor. Oh, I believe this. I believe there. So people... you think they use spears because they're post-apocalyptic hipsters and yes. it's cool. Yes. <laughs> I agree that I agree that people will do dumb things because it's cool or because they feel powerful. We're seeing that all over the place right now. And I think Fallout does a good job of capturing that mm. in a, a lot of the other factions, like that white mask society. Yeah, um, whatever. There can, turns out to be a cannibal. Yeah, crew. that's. But that to me is like the exactly, white glove society. Yeah, that's exactly parroting that yeah. idea. You know, or even the kings. Like the kings are amazing, but also like that's just people trying to be cool and belong to a club. And also, you know? really unlikely that that would ever really happen. I agree. That one Elvis felt based gang. better to me than the Legion did. Really? Yeah, okay. I believed that more than I believed the Legion. I would. It's interesting that you talk about Vegas being so interesting. I found all the Vegas casino quests not that interesting. That was by far not the most interesting part to me. I, I want to hear more this. from you. I did, did like I did them? Okay. Too. What was your favorite casino quest, Vanessa? Oh my god, I'm trying to remember because it's been a minute since I played it, and a lot of the times whenever I do anything casino based, I'd mostly just get stuck at the poker tables. Uh-huh. There was Gamora, <laughs> which is that. run by just a gang of raiders who just act like raiders, and I think you just have to like save a a rancher's son from them. Yeah, there's the White Glove Society where you find out they're eating people. That the White Glove favorite. was one of my favorites because the I kings. love anything that I love. The Kings, the Kings are you. 
They're not the in Kings, Vegas. They're the outside. Ki- but they're not in Vegas. The white glove wins it mm. for me because I like anything that ends with we eat people. Uh, sure, sure. I just, why not? I don't know why I find it to be the funniest story <laughs> oh, trope. It's funny right. to you. It's real dumb. <laughs> oh, it is not, real dumb. I'm, it's basic- I'm funny to you? I'm a cannibal to you? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's basically like somebody read The Modest Proposal and they didn't know it was satire. Like, mm-hmm. I like I like that scenario where it's like, oh, you did this now. And also, one of the things I love about Fallout is whenever they take it to something that's almost like a Cormac McCarthy level of the road where like, who are the people that started eating people? Mm-hmm. And I, know- I want to know where they are. Because what the reason I like fallout is it makes you ask yourself how far am i how many steps am i from just being feral and running into those characters are fun for me like i i don't think there's that big of a separation in my brain between like i'm a person i'm an animal and and seeing that is always a fun character addition for me here's my question whenever people say that because i agree that we overestimate. I think human behavioral palette is just a really, really, really complex version of animal behavior palettes, and there's yeah. no real difference. But I always wonder: Does that make you feel like animals deserve more care and respect and have souls, or does it make you feel like humans are just animals? <laughs> <laughs> like, not you know what I mean? I feel like it I know takes which me way to, you go. I want to know which way she goes. I feel like it just takes me to humans are just animals because of the <laughs> amount of time. I try to take the optimistic view. <laughs> <laughs> that animals deserve more respect than we give them. Like uh, it's it's honestly like one of those like why not both situations because like animals deserve more respect because of how close I am to one. Like if I can't get into a door, it takes four seconds for me being like, can I jimmy to this lock to when I c- I could just hit it. I could just hit it until it's open. And we didn't fall out or life life. Oh, okay. I did that yesterday. Uh, which I was like, is why you I'm can't think- bash well, you kicked fallout. in a door yesterday. I tried to, how I was it? tried, it, re- it didn't work. They had to sh- call a locksmith. Uh, oh, man, I wish I could have seen that, but like, I really would have enjoyed that. <laughs> I really like threw myself against it. Wow. Like a fly Committed. just trying to get out of a window. And I started thinking about how I am like, as soon as it was over, I was like, what can I root around in the community garden to eat? Cause I'm starving and I can't get into my apartment. <gasps> an and I was like, animal. Oh wow. It takes an hour <laughs> yeah. for me to become an animal. <laughs> Just one hour That's of just good. not being able to get into shelter before I'm like, root around a garden. And you're like sniffing the wind like, <laughs> I smell meat from the westerly well, direction. But again, like the premise of this question, you've, you've, you've subtracted from that moment. You've subtracted all context or understanding of what made you do any of those things and just like looked at it as though you didn't understand what that being was doing right. and called it the same thing. Well, presumably and you're still having human thoughts in your head while this is going on. Well, that's Whereas that's, an animal would be thinking, door shut, go left, food, hunger. If, like, if they different. think. If, if they, they think. think. Right. Like, that's the thing is like any question uh, of the likeness between animals and humans, it's like until we know what consciousness is, until we know what it is. You can't call them the same thing. And I think this can't. does bear on Fallout. Yeah, it Because does. this is the exact kind of unanswerable philosophical question that this show yep. believes that video games can hold the key to and why they're an interesting mm-hmm. media. Yeah. And that fascinates me endlessly. And so I want to ask Adam, are you the yeah. type of guy who, because I agree, if we ever discover an answer to what is consciousness, it's thousands of years in the future, millions, yeah. and maybe it's not a thing that can be discovered. Maybe yeah. it's unknowable. And I believe the universe is filled with things that are unknowable by their sure. nature. If you come to the conclusion that you're not going to know something philosophical, is it ready to move on? Or do you like turning it over in your mind eternally? Uh, it, I mean, unknowable. It depends on how significant the answer to that question is. To the like, universe or to your life? To my life, okay. but also a little bit to the to to so like I mean the the best version of that question is are there souls is there a god right. like those kinds of questions yeah you got to turn them over because at think least I do animals have souls no okay not in the sense that you mean it like maybe in the sense that Aristotle meant it well I mean in the sense that you know you mean it because you're a Christian so sure. I mean. Does God, did God imbue them with life and does he care about them in the way he cares Are about humans? Are they alive? Humans? Is that what you're asking me? Well, is there, does being, cause I, does being alive mean that you have a soul inside you or no? Not necessarily. Uh, does it produce a shadow to, or have a reflection? I'm not ready to give everything souls. And does the, like, I don't think plants have souls. Is the traditional Christian ethos that God gave souls to humans only and they're special? I think that like Aquinas or somebody like that would have said, would have fused Aristotle's views onto it and said, everything has a soul in the abstract sense that it has a nature, but not that it's Plato's sense of it where like there's a separate 
eternal entity that imbibes each creature. That's what I mean. I like, don't have the answer to that because I really don't. God know the made have yeah. made us of themselves. I want do some Christians and hey, Christians and Catholics and Jews and Muslims out there. I'd love your answers too. Yeah. Do you believe that God deemed to imbue animals with that same kind of special energy, whatever the soul is? Does God care about them in the same way, or are we different? Are we special? I'm a pretty nihilistic Jew, so I just go with like God. Oh, nothing has a soul. Okay. Oh, really? All right. Even in, from the Torah. Do you know you probably don't believe in the Torah? Uh, no, I mean, like I, I, I definitely read, and I feel like the Torah is ripe for a lot of a lot of doubt and a lot of like Judaism as a religion mm-hmm. is question everything. Yep. Uh, like that's probably my favorite thing about high holiday dinners is that you are encouraged to debate and try and figure out these questions. Yeah. And my conclusion at this is somebody that was like raised Catholic and then went to Judaism. Oh, that's interesting. Was just like eh, nothing has a soul. There's no. It doesn't. It doesn't go anywhere towards after. Uh, it doesn't go anywhere after. There's no like dumpage for it. So just nothing. What's the name of the nothing place for Jewish souls? Shoah. Uh, oh, uh, I'm gonna get uh, in so much trouble. It's <laughs> not Shoah. It's, uh, it's, it's not Shoah. It's in the uh, Psalms all the time. Uh, Sheol, I, someone, Sheol, Sheol, there which is yeah. I under or most of my Jewish friends interpret that as a place where you dissipate and lose all consciousness. Like it's nothing. There's a lot of right? debate about that. In, I'm sure in there the is. day of the first century AD, there was two sects of Jews, mm-hmm. Sadducees and Pharisees, who had different views on whether that meant what Sheol was. And the Pharisees right. were real intense about it. Sadducees were even more. Didn't intense. Yep. Are the Pharisees the one who made David bring them a thousand foreskins? No, that was the Hittites and the Philistines. Yep. No, yeah, different That's, podcast. I'm back yeah. in theology class. I don't even know how this related at all to Be- Fallout. Well, first, first yeah. of all. Uh, Philosophy, which and moral yeah. for which I Fair think enough. is real. Second of all, I do think Vanessa's right that one of yeah. the themes is how the the in the post apocalypse there are certain humans who would become basically animalistic. Yeah, and and I do think that you experience what your experience of like how close are you to being a monster slash animal is what Fallout wants you to think about. And it is, a, mm-hmm. it's a morality simulator where you can choose the evil choice and then that makes you wonder why did I choose that? See, <laughs> yeah. and, well, and again, this is, it's all presuppositional as all philosophy is, but like the reason that I didn't think the NCR was a bad decision is what you said is correct that that, that series of decisions the NCR represents led to apocalypse. But I still believe that human beings learn from things like that. So there is a, there is a possibility that the NCR could build a society that learned from that mistake and prevented it in the future or else all of it's a cosmic joke. Like those are my two options. Or no fashion. matter what you do, nukes might eventually fall and there's nothing to be and done. And then it's about like, that. well then make it, e- make it the least pain for everybody. Right. Th- and you're th- like, so point. slavery's a no go. <laughs> right. Like, let's, yeah, let's slavery's look at the a no go. That's not well, a thing hey, I like. Yeah. Don't quote me out of context. Quote, Michael Swain, <laughs> slavery is a no go. <laughs> my stance is very clear on this. I might not have said it with enough <laughs> conviction, but yes. uh, okay. Here's something I want to get say that yeah. will get us very concretely back on track. Okay, but I do think a lot of the fans of the show appreciate the philosophy aside, sure. and uh, I also want to get it out of the way. Ooh, we have to say it though, Adam. Please take the lead and explain in passing detail mm-hmm. as a game because yeah. we're still a review show, right? People who haven't played it, what's wrong with it? Why is it a bad game? Why is <laughs> Why it better as a spreadsheet? Good. Right. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> the best example of it is, I think, how the main story unfolds, right? So once you, like, most of this game, you're trying to find out who shot you in the head, removing all your memories, and what you were trying to deliver mm-hmm. in the, in, in literally the set, setup of this game. You were trying to deliver some chip, and you're like... What was that chip? Nobody knows. Why was I shot? Why was it taken from me? I don't know. And you're going through a series of uh, interviews slash events to find the answer to that question. Well, once you meet Mr. House, right, who is sort of the only surprising incident in this game. Mr. House is like, oh, oh, this is a really crazy direction we're going in. I think the existence of Yes Man is mildly surprising, but then Mr. House is the big 
yes. Act three twist. You're yes, right, although yeah. you're directed right to Yes Man, so yeah. it, it's not that surprising. I guess it's not a twist in so much as I appreciate any clever sci-fi concepts that are embedded. Yes. And the idea that someone programmed a robot to always do what they say, but they forgot to make it specific to them is yes. a really funny, clever sci-fi concept. <laughs> I agree. I think everything in Fallout New Vegas is exactly what you just said. It's like, I think oh, it's that's a really a cool good concept. sci-fi concept. <laughs> yeah. But the experience of it is like, okay, so this is how this thing works. Yep. Like, that's how I experienced it. I walked down this hallway, I found Mr. Yes Man, and I learned his thing. And after and I he said feel it, anything about because you know how Fallout structure works, you're like, okay, well, that point is saved if I ever yes. want to do this or this route. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> after that moment, everything it basically unfolds in kind of a linear progression. And you sort of, every single decision that you make about, do I warn this faction, do I not warn this faction, is sort of, I want to call it faded a little bit by, once, by your proclivity at that moment. Once you've decided that's your the faction, problem. then you're set. That's the problem with this game is that you, the factions don't, your, your comprehension of what you're doing doesn't change. The understanding of what might happen if you side with this person or that person doesn't really change. You just sort of play it out for the next mm-hmm. 15, 20 hours. That's bad narratively. That's just a bad experience narratively. Now, what the game depends on is that you go to all these places like the Great Cons and like, what a cool fucking group of people. And they, they have, have a different, such a cool thing. They have They're a different philosophy. Yeah. And you learn it and you are intrigued by it. This is a game designed by people who think it's fun to read plots on a computer screen. You guys have said you like that. I do that with Wikipedia all the time. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> I want to have experiences that play out in front of me. He's beat the red use. right now. I well, don't like look, that. Look, <laughs> look, when we watch a movie, right? When you watch an emotional scene in a movie, inevitably there'll be a moment where somebody says something meaningful and then there's music under it, right? Mm-hmm. Why is there music under it? Because the, if their point of the moment is to make your tears well, they know that music is one of the key human right. things to do that. It, it, It'll teeter you right into tears. Correct. It's You're, a, they're building a, a moment. Yes. Yeah. Well, what they're doing is they're giving you the most of this emotional stimuli they can to direct it so that you have the experience they want you to have. They want to push you over the edge into whatever right. emotion they want. It yeah. would be completely insane for us to have that happen in real life. But movies and all entertainment are about focusing so you only have the certain emotions they want you to have. Yeah. This game decided we don't care about that. We don't need to guide your experience. You're just going to have whatever intellectual reaction you have to it. And then you're going to take that. And that to me is like, no, you needed to guide it more. Interesting. It needed to have more. And they, they you've knew argued that. against gating very hard. I ha- in it's previous not the episodes. gating part. It's the what are the emotions of each of what are the beats? Do okay. they matter? You mean a firmer hand moment to moment? No, yes. this is not an argument of gating versus level no. building or anything. Okay. It's it's about do the moments ex- give me experiences that mean anything to me? So Fallout I really 4, just expected you to say Vats is clunky and the graphics aren't good. The, but the, the graphics are the graphics are fine for the time. Sure. They're bad now. But Fallout Four clearly recognized this was a problem because they they weren't went to a cinematic dialogue sequence mm-hmm. like when you make dialogue in, in fallout 4 you watch your guy say it and then you watch the other person say their response oh man fallout it's, new vegas it's a monologue to camera and it takes forever it takes forever to get through a dialogue mm-hmm. tree but they do speak right it's recorded lines. they do speak yeah, yeah. but tell me you don't read it and skip you have to i didn't the first time through i do at, in subsequent so time. mike was over at my house when i started the first dlc I, that i started are you gonna talk about oh no wait i just want to tell the story yeah. about sunken cost fallacy go ahead, go ahead. the first time i came over and he was playing new vegas mm-hmm. you know yeah. the part where you go into the quarry and you have to kill eight death oh claws? my god yeah. yeah he tried to tackle it way too low level and literally for two and a half hours while i was hanging out i was like just do any other mission it's an open world and he's like I've already decided to do this. <laughs> I have to do this. You know what? Killed the entire visit just trying to kill eight death claws. Never did it. They're all no, they're dead. See, okay, but all the, those fuckers are dead. Now. That makes there, sense even. to me though, because yeah. I will fall into that trap. Yeah. Yeah. I've done that. That's how I played all of Borderlands. Mm-hmm. Like I did everything being too low level yeah. for everything I was in. And instead of it, like I could just go and complete other missions Side and level quests. up, but I just wouldn't do that. No, because you already did this much. And it's, I don't want to do it again. I already did that much. And then yeah. I ended up doing more. More than if I just did side quests where I would just create another character, leave it there. So if I died, I didn't end up somewhere further and I could just spawn in that area. Right. That's more work. Correct. I just <laughs> didn't want to walk away. It's also about managing something that's as unwieldy as 
your to do list is in all these Bethesda games because like for me I love seeing a to do list with ninety things. I on do it. too in this game because I know how to manage that. Uh-huh. I'm like I'm going to see all this thread through, then I'm going to do this thread, then I'm going to do this thread. It's how I direct things too. Otherwise, wow. the project becomes unmanageable. Oh, mm-hmm. it's like I divide. Okay, these are the seven or eight things that have to happen first. I do them. These are the next ten things that have to happen. I do them. I don't do the big picture thing all the time or jump between because I can't manage that. Oh, so this is also true of the games I mentioned in my rant. Mm -hmm. I like the brain tickling feeling of, and this is how I handle my career, which I think Mm. Adam can attest to. Mm. So many irons in the fire that I constantly re-remember things I forgot. Like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to do that too. I like that feeling. I like running to-do lists in my head. So I play all Fallout games very religiously by opening the map, seeing whatever I'm closest to and doing that mission, whatever it is, and then going to the next closest mission and doing that. See, See that f- thought makes me grind my teeth. <laughs> well, like it's too the, not, it's uh, too, organized. it's too shotgun blast. But I'm like, like yeah. this is an exploration game. I want yeah. to explore. But the feel, well, that's interesting because in general, you're pretty rigid with how you spend your time. But I will also add, you're the kind of person that anxiety gives a motor to. Yes. When you're anxious, you do something about Mm -hmm. it. I'm the kind of person, as I've discovered this year, that anxiety makes me stop. Mm. Anxiety traps me. Mm. So like I don't go anywhere when I'm anxious. I sit there and I suffer. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? So like I can't have it. I need to. I cannot have it. I can't have that. You know, like uh, that's. So I have to manage things in such a way that they don't make me anxious. And this game could if I didn't do it that way. See, that's interesting because I'm smack dab in the middle because I hate doing the closest thing. I need to go down a list. But anxiety is literally the only thing that will make me do a thing timely. Mm. Like if you give me an impossible turnaround time, I'll get the thing done. Mm. But if you give me a luxurious three weeks, it's never going to happen. That is accurate. And or you'll do it the last two days yep. before it is actually Or it due. doesn't happen at all. Yeah. yeah. Like, like yeah. give me an impossible. I will. I don't like the idea of like I'm close to this and I'll do it because just the thought of it already is making me grind my teeth with anxiety. <laughs> yeah. Like I like having my this is list A, this is list B, this is list C. But I need anxiety to drive me forward or else I'm just not going to do anything. That's. I think that's like true of all of us. We all need some prodding yeah like i definitely don't like failing people and i don't if i can if i can except today you know? when you showed up an except hour late i to did the i showed up an hour late <laughs> thank you for calling me out on that uh and this, we're at your house this is yeah, that <laughs> is accurate a uh that may have may have been worth it uh <laughs> This is also the second time in a week that I've cost a podcast something for being late, oh, really? which is insane because nice. I'm never late. Uh, yeah, I mean, so yeah, we all need a little anxiety to get things Could done. Could you be pregnant? I, I wish, man. <laughs> that, that'd be, I'd be having such a great yeah, what an honor. month, maybe. Yeah. To bring I wish I had that glow. World. Yeah. Uh, I don't have it, though. Vanessa, sadly. this doesn't involve you. Stop. <laughs> Stop trying to interject. <laughs> Okay, uh, I believe before we talked about whether I was pregnant somehow, uh, we were talking about, <laughs> I don't even fucking you know. You said you were late and you're never late. It was a period joke, but let's move on. I understood. Oh, okay. No, I knew how then you I'll did it. I'm just out. trying, no, don't cut it. <laughs> Leave it in there so they know what it's like <laughs> to fucking deal with you. We were talking about spreadsheets. Right, we were talking about managing uh, the, que- oh yeah. Anxiety so, as a motor. Right, yeah. so uh, before that, it, mm-hmm. th- so like, Narratively, the experience of just sort of seeing each thread out and being interested in the result, like on an intellectual Mm -hmm. level, is not satisfying to me. And I think not what anyone should expect from a game. We should expect them to deliver emotional moments. You know? I I think all art of any medium should be gone into without expectations. And then you just decide what impact did this Mm -hmm. unit of art have on me? Do I think that was meaningful in any way? Um, Like, I would never tell a game designer, no, you can't try that because that's not what video games are. I wouldn't either. I just think it's bad. That's No, and I'm saying, and then the thing you can do is experience it and decide that it's bad. Yeah, 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 exactly. I interrupted you, Vanessa. Oh, no, I was burping it in my hand. Okay. Right, and and (laughs) interrupted. Can you please finish? (laughs) I mean, I can force another one out. (laughs) Can you bring that hand But only on a very tight deadline. (laughs) (laughs) You have 10 seconds to burp again. (laughs) And that's how I throw up on a mic. Uh, No, like, I do kind of agree with that, because I feel like there is a lot of emotion in the first act, but I think it drops off after that. Big time. Uh, And it's it's such a weird feeling. It's like when I love the first half of a movie, Mm -hmm. uh, 
because I, 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 I want to feel the feelings that I felt in that first act the whole way through. And while I do really like the side quest, I don't feel that emotional intensity that I got because it is the best intro of any Fallout game, in my opinion. Like, I do, it's the best introduction I think so, to any character. Hands down. And Fallout franchise always really tries hard to make the intro yeah. cool. You and I think this is the coolest one. More than four? Four had a great intro. I think more than four. Yeah, wow. much more. I think wow. the idea, and I know that it's, I mean, it's a tired trope, but even in an action or noir movie, if it opens with someone getting shot in the head, buried alive, and then rescued, I'm like, in. and they don't have memories, I'm already in. Yeah. I want to know what the fuck is going on. Why'd they shoot you? Hmm. Yeah, I don't it's, know. it's a lot less personal than either of the other two follow I've played. It's just the J.J. Yeah. Abrams mystery yeah. box, but yeah. I enjoy it. I'm like, Because it's a easier cool for me to jump into. And it's also Vegasy, and right? I think it, like fits that city. I think they drop really good hints. Like one of the first things you realize about the main plot when you arrive at the courier offices is you are one of eight couriers sent with an identical chip, and you just happen to have the real one, and the rest were decoys. Right. Yeah. So you're immediately like, "Well, who could have arranged something so vast? Like, what is going on?" And it just reminded me of True Detective season one, where yeah, the mystery's laid out really well. Then when you get the answers, you're like, "Well." The mystery's over, and it wasn't as like a ama- mind blowing as I hoped the answer would be. But that doesn't change the fact that I appreciate the ability to set up a good mystery that draws me in. I agree with that, but unlike Detec- True Detective season one, there was never a Matthew McConaughey thing. Like Matthew McConaughey makes that season work, and Woody Allen—they're both excellent. Woody there. Allen's amazing. They're in both True really Detective. good in that, uh, and, and they got to make- find this guy with the green ears. <laughs> No, that was more of a walking. <laughs> well, the point is, you met Woody Harrelson. You are drunk. <laughs> you met Woody Harrelson, and you said Woody Allen. But no, I, I didn't. Bat- yeah, you did. You have to I said Woody Allen. Said, yeah. So I tried to do a Woody Allen impersonation, which I, I've never I tried before. I just sit and wait to see. I just how wanted soon the. I just want it. the audience to know I have acquiesced not one bit, even though I'm sure that mistake is true. And I'll listen to this oh, episode and know I was a fool. I am the smuggest piece of but shit yeah. right now. <laughs> I, I'm glad you said it though, because Harrelson is also yeah. it's a less demanding part, but he kills it just as hard. Yeah, yeah. Well, like regarding the intro, with most story plots, I think the more specific you are, the more relatable it could be, except for the introduction of a Fallout story, because I feel like since this is supposed to be you and you're supposed to immerse yourself in it, when they don't give you a hyper specific story and they just mm-hmm. leave you with questions, it's mm-hmm. easier to put yourself in that role. Agreed. When they give me a kid and when they give me a partner, when they give me like a house that I don't really give a shit about, it's it's me playing as someone else. Yes. But if it's just a job and then something happens to me and there's questions, it's easier for me to put myself in the shoes of the character. And totally. I also think it's artistically like harmonious because if you're going to always call your man character the survivor the guardian the vault dweller the, cur- the, the courier, courier yeah. the yeah. chosen one right then it's like you are saying this isn't every person that you're supposed to inject yeah. yourself into so follow through on that and i think new vegas did follow through on that in a way that is a little hacky which is you have no memories so you could be anyone i was okay with but that. it's good it's as I, good a reason it as works any. there's a reason yeah. it's a usable trope because right. it's a I good one it. I, I didn't mind there was nothing about the setup for this that i thought was bad I mm-hmm. thought it was in tone with what they were trying to say. It was really like, Vegasy. Yeah, but again, once we've gotten into Vegas proper and learned all the things there and are bo- going back out into the world, from that point on, it's a pretty boring game in, I, the, main, in the main story. I, okay, so something I feel that needs to be brought up before the end, yeah. uh, for especially for New Vegas fans who've done a few playthroughs, because you've only played through once, right? And I, sure. And you seem pretty object-oriented, so I'm wondering how many Easter eggs you found because New Some. Vegas also has the most Easter eggs per yes. square inch of any fallout game. I, I have like and maybe really six super crazy weapons and pieces of armor. Okay. Which yeah. Tells, like the so, sneaking suit, yeah. there's the gold sniper yeah. rifle. You can yeah. find the crashed UFO. I have the, the Q35 the thing, the, yeah. the Tesla beam. My, of course uh, the ultimate is the sun gun. Do you have yeah. the sun gun? I don't. What's Do you know what I'm talking about? No. See, so this, gun, I no. also love a game that you can play this many times and there's something that you didn't yeah. know. The best weapon in the game is if you do the Helios, uh, the Helios Institute missions mm-hmm. in the proper way, rather than giving power to the Hoover Dam or mm-hmm. whichever faction you back, the satellite becomes your personal property and it floats above you in geosynchronous orbit and you have a little laser pointer and anything you point it at, literally the full power of the sun shoots down and like, oh my God, in a nuke sized blast and just evaporates everything. I assumed everything. that I could have that. I just. I'm not a maniac, so like I wanted the world to be better. But I love that 
in a 120 hour game, totally. you're like, I never even saw still hide nor hair found. of that. And it's still, it's there though. Yeah. Totally. That's uh, valid. Given the timing of the, where we at in the episode, I think we got to talk about the DLCs a little bit. I'm with you on that. I yeah. want to say one other thing. Do it. I want to get this out of the way. Cause everyone's going to be like, Ugh, I don't care. Uh, this is a shitty shooter. Uh, this game hey, is a was shitty right. shooter. Like, like it's real bad. As Do you think like that about four too? Four, I said was bad. This game made me realize how pretty good four was, but not, still not compared to good shooters. <laughs> yeah, but it's not even close. It's it's a horrible for aiming and just like using the weapons. It's awful for I've that. I've never ever not used Vats. I know, but I also use Vats. here's the other thing. I use, of course, you have to because it's such a bad shooter. Yes. You don't know how much Vats you have, really. They give you this system where it's like just a bunch of lines, action points. I know, but you don't know what they mean. Whereas in Fallout, they fixed this in Fallout 4, where like you knew how much of the action points each weapon blast used. Wait, wait, wait. So you knew how many shots you had. No, in New Vegas, when you're highlighting but what you you're going to do look in at Vats. It and no, you don't look at yes, it Yes, you get do. It. The little AP lines are tra- flashing transparently, yes. and that tells you how much that shot is going to use. Yes. Well, I what know. What the fuck else do you it's need? It's not clear. Or it's confusing. It's a confusing. It wasn't clear. to me. I See, don't I don't play say. as a shooter, so it's not confusing to me. But that also goes into the thing where it's like, do you consider Fallout a shooter or not? Because I don't play it as that. And I don't. I mean, I personally don't consider it to be a but shooter. But you have to shoot to get out of situations. And I, and I agree with Adam that if it has the option that it like invites you to play as a shooter, because you mm-hmm. can play in real time yeah. as a shooter, yeah. then it's fair to say that component was executed very poorly. But yeah. you, but like, so okay, for at least fifty hours in this game, if you're playing it all the way through, you have to use. You can't use Vats for everything. You use Vats, you run out, then a scorpion's on your ass, and you got to use your gun, right? Yeah. That no. means. I also never run out of vats. That's what Nuka Cola's for. <laughs> to get more vats? Nuka Cola is like a health potion in Skyrim. It, it right? ups your vats, and you find them fucking everywhere. And I, I, I never I run out of. I save a lot of those sodas. I never you ran save out, them? out. Save of, those sodas up, yeah. Never run out of AP because I just drink Nuka Cola's mid battle. Yeah, just to hammer them down. Great thing about the Fallout universe is apparently anyone can ingest any amount of solid or liquid food instantly. That, <laughs> like, that is a great thing. I, you're like, hold on, hold on, Scorpion. I got to eat six chickens, take some steroids <laughs> and chug whiskey. Okay, let's go. I'm just going to I'm just going to put it because we're going to this is going to be quibbling cuz yeah. to me it's like no, just make it so that I can use the fucking system. Don't make me like use coke, you know, like fine. Fine, we can disagree on that. I still think that for the most part you're having to shoot and it should be, be- it has to be better. And they made it a little bit better in Fallout. The melee Fallout. system's pretty good. It is pretty good, I yeah. agree. Uh in addition, the health restoring system is pretty clunky in Fallout New Vegas, by which I mean, I don't know how much health I'm really getting. Like visually, I don't get it. Whereas in Fallout 4, they showed you exactly how much you're going to get from a thing in a meter way. So you're like, okay, I'm going to drink this Nuka Cola. It's going to restore to here if I don't take a, if I don't take damage, right? I feel like you're like looking on the wrong Pip-Boy screen. I'm not. If you go to the Pip-Boy status screen where it has the outline of your guy... There is a gauge, I and know. when you highlight the stim pack, it shows you exactly how much health but it's going to raise. But you don't. This is like listening to a tech support call. <laughs> I know, but 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 you don't do that necessarily in real time, right? Like like if you're like healing in the middle of a battle or whatever, like you don't do that stuff in real time. Like they fixed in Fallout Four, they fixed this stuff so that it, things were just more intuitive and you could like see it and understand I it just, better. I think by saying fixed, you're assuming that the goal is to make everything possible to do in real time, and it, it just never more of that never even. A, I would hate it if they pushed it more that way. Like, it never even occurred to me that this game should be played in real time. It's an RPG. Well, I would say they decided in 4 that it is not as much an RPG uh, which as is you think I like New Vegas and that, better. And that makes yeah. sense. I don't like <laughs> RPGs as much as you yeah. do. New Vegas is clearly more of an RPG. I, and then 4 is leaning more towards like, look, Skyrim was our biggest hit. Right. Let's make the shooting smoother like it was in Skyrim. Yeah. But again, like, I like the immersion... I like to be immersed in a real time experience in a first person game mm-hmm. generally, not always, but generally. And this game found reasons to break that all the time. And I don't like that. That's something I noticed a lot with people that played four first and then went to new Vegas. Cause I, I like an RPG setting, which is why I liked it. But I noticed right. people that are very shooter heavy or they played four, they would usually ask, this is like the, the main sentence that I heard, which was, am I playing this wrong? Yeah. Just cause they couldn't, the, the, it, the, they couldn't quite grasp that it didn't play like a shooter, that it played yep. more like an RPG, and they they thought it was something they were doing wrong. 
That makes sense to me because it, it has all the trappings of being a shooter, and so you approach it with the thing your brain is trained to do, and this game's like, nope, your brain is wrong. And I don't even remember, but there, it's very possible that when I very first played it, they're like five hours where it took me to realize that the shooting's so bad that I have to just think of it as an RPG. Yes. But I'm just saying, once I made that brain switch, I've never gone back. Like when you were describing, yeah, like, why can't I heal on the fly? I'm like, because it's an RPG. You have to go to your inventory. It's, I just think of the game as differently than and you I'm do. Like, yeah. And I'm like, every RPG, you want me to you believe to this your... fucking story or not? Like, you know, let me drink a Coke on the fly and it slowly heals me. Mm-hmm. In well, this I... insane 50s inspired nuclear like, apocalypse. Do you have to you know? believe Zelda Breath of the Wild to enjoy it? You love it? bringing no. it up. Like, Zelda's this, like, bastard <laughs> child. Well, I've played it. And you're, you're fighting hmm. the tide of history on this shit, bro. You really are. No, no. I'm just trying to pick your brain. Because you, first of all, did I say anything negative about it? I saw it in your eyes. No, Sorry. I'm asking to the compare because you're, really you're saying New Vegas, it takes me out of the world that yeah, I can't does. drink Coke in On real time. Right. It doesn't take you out of the world in Breath of the Wild that you're in a ridiculous fantasy kingdom. Like what? I don't understand where the line is. Well, but is. you don't. It, it's the it's the inventory management stuff in the middle of a combat situation. But in Zelda, you also pause combat. To manage a complex inventory and build potions and drink them and then unpause and fight. I never do that in the middle of a fight. But you can. What's the yeah, difference? Yeah, you can. <laughs> right. Well, but you're saying, but this the difference is that I have to in Fallout New Vegas. Whereas I don't have to in Fallout 4 and I don't have to in Breath of the Wild. Actually, in Vegas, you can drink Cokes and use weapons on the fly using your D-pad. Them, it's right. just really clunky. Yes, it's clunky. Yeah. That's, like, you wouldn't use it if you're It's like you smart. use it and you don't know exactly how much you're going to have, you're going to heal from that. It's just like it's just not a good instant real time interface. Sure, and I think that's a problem. I think we've wasted enough time on this. Well, yeah, we got to get to the last segment soon. The but DLCs mention the. I don't need to talk. I want to hear your guys' perception of DLC. Sure, because all I really have to say is like a ten second rant, which is, I understand Vanessa certainly mm. that, and I feel this way about Donnie Darko and other types of media. Like, you lose points for the fact that the best part or the part that made it complete is not in the thing that originally was delivered. Yes, you lose points. But now that this game is so old that the price has dropped and I'm like, just get all the DLCs. There's four of them. And in my opinion, they complete the game. They're the, like the... At um, least the reunion one does. The Lonely Road, which is the last one, wraps up the Courier's story in a way that's way more satisfying than the actual main plot wrap. Because the main plot doesn't bear on you personally. It just bears on... The history just generally how does everything shake out right but also each dlc reinvigorated the gameplay of fallout they show so much creativity they're all vastly different the one honest hearts that takes place in zion and i loathe to admit this but is it the one in utah that's the one in, in utah, utah yeah, yeah. uh mm. there were stories that weren't even said by characters they were on terminals so we're talking neon green text on a screen that oh made me weep openly they're so good yeah there's Ugh. like short I'm stories I'm a big old terminal slut like any yeah. <laughs> I, I have to stop by that they're re- so good I'm getting that tattooed on my arm <laughs> a terminal slut. they should be released as a collection of short stories yes. they're fucking amazing they're so good yeah so there's a did okay. you ever discover the story in Honest Hearts about the person who's dying of radiation poisoning and they're living in a cave and they don't want to poison the tribe that lives there but they keep dropping food off so the tribe starts to think of them as like a friendly spirit and yep. they slowly die and they're like at least I did something good with the last part of my life and it's like so good <laughs> it's I, I was just like I'm just sitting on a dark floor of my itchy carpet scrolling down and like quietly weeping because yep. I'm like this is this is a perfect short story I want a compilation of this and I like that it's something that isn't presented to me obviously it's something that I came upon yes it makes it feel more special. And the story of Joshua Graham, the burned man who was thrown off the Grand Canyon and now is a devout Mormon revolutionary is such a fucking badass character. He's it's awesome. A, it, it's a, <laughs> I, see, I thought that was the worst of the DLCs. But okay. I did like... But talk yeah. on them in general. Well, well no, no, you, you talk. Yeah, well, please. My brief thing is I appreciate... like. Like I said earlier, I do want like... I want it to feel completed when it comes out. I don't want the DLC to do it for me. But... I appreciate when a DLC adds to something and yeah. it is not just a cutscene sold back to me. Uh, Cause I've been gypped by that before. Mm-hmm. Like fucking gears of war three, mm-hmm. two of their DLCs are just cutscenes that were originally in it sold back to you. And I feel like fallout new Vegas did a fantastic job of 
all of their DLCs feeling like what they're supposed to be an expansion on a story mm-hmm. and 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 giving me more to explore and like like what you said with the terminals feeling like you came upon something special and I I, I love the DLCs well I would have liked to have that experience directly out the gate but mm-hmm. I appreciate that when I buy a DLC I'm actually getting more yeah and, and they'll invent new systems like the gameplay and the old world blues ones which is the story is amazing. It gives the background of how all the monsters came to mm-hmm. exist in the Fallout universe. But uh, you Which know, I had, old world blues, uh, the super sciencey, almost oh comedic. Oh my god! One yeah, the big empty with James yeah. Urbaniak. Yeah, yeah, and it's like you said, all the concepts just appeal to me so much. Like an idea that it was called Big Mountain, then it got blown up, and now it's called the Big MT. Yeah, I like these are cool writery things. I I thought that was a really funny. Uh, that was a really funny DLC. It, reminded, it was. It was really. It funny. reminded me of the um, Far Cry DLC that tried to be funny in the yeah. '80s. That was didn't I? I don't, don't think succeeded. Oh, as Far much. The, the Blood Dragon one. I yeah. thought Blood Dragon was a pretty successful. And also, DLC. man, if you compare those DLCs with the Fallout Four DLCs, I don't know if you played them, but like the one that adds a new area, it's this gray island swathed in fog, and it's fucking boring. Mm. Yeah. And then every other DLC for all the new Fallout's just adds more Lego bricks to the building component that I couldn't care less about. Yep. I I didn't hate that. Uh, okay, so I, everything you guys have said is true, all of it. Every like I can't disagree with anything you said. I don't like. I'm not really a terminal slut. I'm more of a. I'm more of a terminal <laughs> flirt. Like I like. I'll check it out. Like mm, I don't know. Won't we'll dedicate the time to reading a story on yeah, it. Yeah, like I need to know it's gonna pay off. You know, You'll skim the they, first panel and see that, if it interests you. That terminal better put a ring on me before I'm getting in bed with it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like there better so. be a cage with power armor next to it so you know it'll <laughs> open it. Yeah. So I don't always experience the rich uh, intellectual mm. history that you guys do, and that you know. Okay, so I That's so it's okay. not fair for me to shit on your experience of that Mm because like you guys did the work and I didn't. So I'm just going to comment on the actual DLCs themselves. All of them are interesting in their own way. All of them have fallouty kinds of like plot twists and like, and they're more developed as plot twists and stuff than the main game. They're better at it. And add gameplay mechanics. Yes. And they add weapons and stuff that are fun to use. Mm -hmm. All of them, except for the last one were bad environments. All of them were bad environments. Oh, I love the environment in dead money. Is Dead Money the one where you're you're you you're a bomb in your neck? Oh no, that if anyone's is a fucking a, nightmare. Well, if you're a fan of video games and the movie The Treasure Sierra Madre, you yeah. have to play Dead Money. I like such I, a good I homage. own that movie. I love that movie. And it the dog so god fun. character is one of the best Fallout characters. Fair enough. I'm not gonna take that away from you either. I'm not gonna take it like I thought the silent woman who later talks was amazing. Uh but the the experience of that world was horrible for me. It's very frustrating. It's so to navigate. Fr- don't make me frustrated. <laughs> and it looks like dog shit, and you can't see anything. Like you're mad at this gray world they added in Fallout Four. That place is the Garden of Eden compared to. But the have you been to that life. island, the Fallout Four? Of course, 4 I have. Oh, I just found it so. It is. Rote. It's drab. It, it is. was not a good addition. So to is the story. this. Dead Money was real bad. No, but I'm saying on a spreadsheet level, Dead Money had cool story things sure. like you would grant. And the, mm. I know this isn't the Fallout 4 episode, but that DLC was fucking boring. It was like boring. the plot concepts were goddamn boring and wrote. And it was too clunky for how little it had to offer me. Yeah, that's and that's all fair. Dead Money is garbage from a <laughs> from a like a gameplay sure, environment sure. experience, not narratively. And you didn't good. like Honest Hearts. Which one was Honest Hearts? Honest Hearts is Zion. Obviously not. Memorable it was just really short. It was really short and like getting around and it was kind of frustrating because everything was on these weird tiers and levels. But so that like, DLC Let me get somewhere. I think that makes sense. That DLC had the most terminal text of any Fallout yeah. component. And I'm, so I'm sure you I missed it. You skipped it. a lot of the content. I'm yeah. sure I missed Well, I was racing to get to this podcast <laughs> sure. part of it. Um, the reunion one is excellent. I can't say. I, I. It's also not the most fun experience, but it's way better. But it almost gives you the third act you wish you had. And yeah. it gives me the Fallout experience that I've been looking for this whole game. It's fantastic. The space one, or the the science old place, world blues, uh, is funny enough that I forgive it for its flaws. One of which being that you have to listen to thirty fucking minutes of like dialogue trees before you can leave the first area. Mm-hmm. Yep, and it's like, no, dude. But not, it's Doctor Venture an, talking, so it's I don't okay. Give a fuck. <laughs> I don't care. Like, give me. Like weed it in, man. Like let right, me right. play the game. Mm-hmm. Like I, you sat there and watched me no, watch it, true. and I started to squirm. I was like, oh, No, in what? that one, the iBots just immediately go, 
Okay, buckle in. Here's the entire explanation of this DLC. <laughs> it re- and it like and with whimsical like Jokes funny in things, and yeah. they're all really well performed. And the world is so bananas and great. And the g- guns you get there are super cool. I liked it, but then I also had got, I got the sneaking suit from that, mm-hmm. right? And I regretted it, but I had I had basically played the rest of the game with that thing, and it keeps talking to you the whole time. That fucking suit talks to you and like makes bad jokes. Which I liked at first, and then after a while, I was like, you shut up, suit. You fucking suit. I hate you so oh, much. Oh, I love that shit. <laughs> uh, unlike, I love that shit. I love the talking Unlike the third basement level of the Hoover Dam, you can get a sneaking suit with the same stats that doesn't talk. That's what I needed, because I got yeah. real tired. That, that's, that suit was uh, really great on me after a while. Yeah. All right, Vanessa, any DLC observations before we get to our final verdicts? Uh, no, I think I, I, I think I said my DLC piece. All right. If you'd be so kind as to hit that checkpoint. Hit it. She did it. I touched it. We move into the segment I always forget the name of. Keep or delete. How do you always forget it? Because I, I remember everything with acronyms. So I always think it's something KOD. Yeah. But J. Cole just released an amazing album I'm obsessed with. Yeah. The That's called KOD. Mm. Uh, so that has replaced that neuron in that's my brain and I don't remember it I'd anymore. name it POD, but then you'd be distracted by Piece that band. Piece of delete? Yeah. <laughs> uh, payable upon, on death? Is that what that stood for? Is that what, they, is that what the name of the band I was? believe they were a Christian band. I yeah, they're a Christian true. band. It meant payable on death, meaning, you know, everything you do right. in life is... Yeah. Right, right. No, it, rewarded upon your death. All the great music they made, God's going to give them the thumbs up by the, when they get there. You, you have misunderstood what they meant by that, but I'm not going to get into it because that's a waste of our time. Was it the reverse? They meant you'll be punished on death? No. I thought it's not about no. I, it's no. not about the we're afterlife. Waste, waste, well, we were wasting our time. No, explain the origin. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do it. Is that a is that a Christian saying? Yes. Payable on death. It's 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 referring to Jesus' sacrifice, not to. Human. Uh, That's what it's about. It's not about uh, meaning you'll you only repay. Mean he your paid debt. for sins on death. He paid okay, for okay. sins when he died. Uh, then it should have been paid in advance because payable on right. death. But then that grammatically pad. implies the future. No, that's not pad. That's paid. In yeah. Pia. And then we wouldn't even have people? that song. This, by the way, is the Piff. second time we've uh-huh. made content about pod. <laughs> Because we did that fucking Cody nope, video. That's yes, puddle we did. of mud. Puddle of mud. No, but pod was in it. They were mentioned. Palm. Anyway. I'm trying to do acronyms Palm in my is head. pomegranate juice, so we yep, can't use that. Anyway, we are the youth of America, and this is what we think about Fallout New Vegas. I would keep it. I think it's the best Fallout game. Yeah. I think we've clearly elucidated. Yeah. If you're the type of person who likes the things that people who liked it said about it, you'll like it. If not, all of Adam's complaints are valid. Mm. And that's that's saying something for a fanboy to admit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna keep it because even though I wish I could keep playing it after I finished it, it doesn't mean I'm not gonna go through and play it again and I want to see what my different scenarios look like because that's the fact that I still haven't found all of the Easter eggs there is to find makes me want to go back. So keep it. I I feel like I have to keep it. Uh, I know (laughs) because there isn't. I thought you would keep three, personally. No, this is a little better. Cool. Uh, narratively, it's a little better. Yeah. I don't think Fallout is good enough as a gameplay experience to be on the hard drive. <laughs> but people on the but, golden drive. Yeah, but like, but I mean, Fallout drives people to a frenzy. Like this, like this game franchise matters so much, and mm-hmm. it'd be like me saying there can't be a Mario on it or something. It's like, come on, there's got to like be a couple of Marios, right. yeah, <laughs> or like there can't be a Sonic. There's got to be a fucking Sonic on it, dude. There's got to be a Fallout. This is the one. What a fair-minded man. I'm fair. I think, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. no, I, I wasn't trying to, I was trying to compliment, not reverse compliment. <laughs> I'm going to bust out those POD CDs. You're going to listen I'm to I'm saying it you had every right to pass on it, and I would have understood no. why, but my my withered fanboy heart yeah. just grew three sizes because we all kept <laughs> yeah. it. really did. It's too, too bad you're not speaking in rhyme like, like I oh. expected you to. <laughs> Adam did keep and not delete. Now I can, <laughs> now I can sleep between the sheets without right. fear that... His I'll verdict have to so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's three keeps. So I guess play yeah. it even if you yeah. don't. If you don't want to. If you want to experience the best premise-wise sci-fi game that I've played, this is pretty close to that. It's up there. Yeah, pretty I, close. It has more concepts packed in, but I also thought Dead Space has. There's nothing about the execution of the tone that's not nailed. Dead Space yeah. is incredible. <laughs> yeah. I love that fucking game. If you're gonna have a Fallout, make it be this one. Agreed. 
All right. Well, that's the final word. Thank you guys so much. This has been One Upsmanship. Vanessa, where can people find your work online? Uh, you can find me on VanessaGritton.com. And also I have a podcast called Brouhaha. Listen to it. I, I, I mostly just <laughs> say it as you can catch things that I say coming out of other people's mouths. On some shows that I can't say which one. On some shows I can't say yet. The Office. <laughs> <laughs> she wrote all of Michael's monologues. She's amazing. <laughs> um, okay, this is a really weird request, but do you guys mind if I finish with a rap? Yeah. Because I have a Fallout rap that's one of my better raps. I have go. no plans to record any version of it anytime soon because it's so specific and fanboyish. If there's a place for but it. But it's, it's about here. New Vegas, so why wouldn't I share it? All right, here we go. I can always cut this too. We have a good out. I'm a vault dweller straight out of locked cellar door. You might have seen a lot of hell or more, but I'm a wanderer. I roam around, son. By the end of this one, I'm deciding the outcome. I'll determine which faction you give half to your caps to. Max stats to blast the gnats and fats is like capping statues. Ricochet perk, your bullets coming back at you. A merc with a strong back. No loot, I can't move. Black rimmed glasses on, no point I can't prove. Grim Reaper's sprint, AP renews when I frag fools. And I mean, that's cool. I'm gonna see what these hats do. Clamber up a mountain, NPCs be like, damn, dude. The way you hop ridges breaks physics and rhyme. I take my days like my companions, one at a time. My gun, it's sublime. I modded it myself. Scrounge around for wonder glue and barter Brahmin pelts. But when I hop in my T60, crack a stim pack for health. Because my punches leave welts like Muppets, they're felt. I'm special, special, so special, <laughs> special. I've got strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck at fucking with you. War never changes. Just like my tactics. Surprise attack for double damage, criticals to match it. Super mutant scatter, as I'm sure you can imagine, to the clatter the chambers and my big iron blast and just pass in a terminal I hack it in case a rad roach is packed to hatch it crisp as a vlasic pickle in a disc world Terry Pratchett just a boy and his dog and his fat man and that shit boom when I duck to hide no one can spot me green brackets so wide apart they're off screen confused what's this intrusion for well you were snoozing sport with your shoes on next to a chest of fusion cores and since the newest war we're in we nuked the board there ain't no superstores. so if you'll ignore this exclusive tour of what's between your doors by a cool or we'll move forward. Scorpions, I'm rad and ghouls, I'm feral. Pretty soon you'll be looking down a loaded plasma rifle barrel. I'm special, special, so special, special. <laughs> I've got strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck and fucking with ya. Blitzing with my Pikmin's drawn and death claws die around me. I downloaded all the DLCs, I'm basically astounding. Spent six hours at the surgeons, just getting all this work done. Had them slap on every scar tattoo and blemish just for fun. But when flirt text is yellow, then I'm bound to hit it. Cause I'm a likable fellow pip boy big pimp and turn mute fruit to lemonade beyonce like a brotherhood recruit staking out the enclave entree a molotov place goes flambe if i don't like results i just reload my autosave don't need no fev i'm feeling highly evolved that's a fallout 2 reference adam wouldn't get i don't need no fev <laughs> i don't need no fev i'm feeling highly revo- evolved i'm gonna persist until this moral quandary gets solved blue with digits on my back like a player a courier vault dweller soul survivor slayer that's the end <laughs> wow yeah! I have this on my phone all the time. Wow. Awesome. Ham. Bye. Bye.